Hi everyone, this lesson is on trigeminal neuralgia. So we're gonna talk about what causes this condition. We're also gonna talk about the signs and symptoms, how it's diagnosed and how it's treated. So trigeminal neuralgia is also known as tic de la rue. It is a neurological condition involving recurrent episodes of facial pain. The epidemiology reveals that trigeminal neuralgia affects approximately four to 13 people per 100,000 each year. And the lifetime prevalence of actually getting trigeminal neuralgia is anywhere between 0.16 and 0.3%. So it is a relatively rare condition. What is noted is that there is a higher prevalence of trigeminal neuralgia in patients over 50 years of age. And an associated condition with trigeminal neuralgia is multiple sclerosis. So there is a higher likelihood of having trigeminal neuralgia if a patient has multiple sclerosis. And what's important to note is that if trigeminal neuralgia occurs early on in life, it's important to think about whether this patient may have multiple sclerosis. And in fact, those patients are at an increased risk for getting multiple sclerosis later on if they've had trigeminal neuralgia earlier on in life. Now let's talk about the pathophysiology behind this condition. Before we do that, we need to know the anatomy. So the trigeminal nerve is what is affected in trigeminal neuralgia. Trigeminal nerve is cranial nerve number five, and it actually has three branches. So the trigeminal nerve branches out from the pons, which is a deeper brain structure, and there are three branches. One of them is known as the ophthalmic branch, or V1. V2 is the maxillary branch, and V3 is the mandibular branch. So you can see in this image here, this is the ophthalmic zone, the maxillary zone, and the mandibular zone. Now, the trigeminal nerve is responsible for the following. It's responsible for the sensation of the face. So each of those branches is involved in the sensation in those respective areas. And the trigeminal nerve is responsible for the activity of chewing muscles, and in particular, the masseter or masseter muscles. Now, the cause of trigeminal neuralgia is, in some cases, idiopathic, which means that the cause is not entirely known. But many cases of trigeminal neuralgia are believed to be due to compression of the trigeminal nerve. And it's estimated that compression of the trigeminal nerve is responsible for 80 to 90 percent of cases of trigeminal neuralgia. So this means that the trigeminal nerve is compressed by nearby arteries and or veins. So vasculature in the nearby area of the face here may press or compress on that nerve, leading to a lot of the symptoms we're going to talk about in the next slide. The most common artery that is implicated in compression of the trigeminal nerve is the superior cerebellar artery. So that is the most common cause of compression of the trigeminal nerve. Some of the other ones include the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, the vertebral arteries, and the petrosal vein. Now, some tumors in that area of the head may also lead to compression of the trigeminal nerve and lead to trigeminal neuralgia as well. And what happens is the compression by some of those arteries or veins we talked about before leads to demyelination of the trigeminal nerve. So demyelination is where the fatty insulation on the nerve is destroyed or removed. So that is demyelination. And here are some of the arteries that we talked about before that can cause compression of the trigeminal nerve, including the vertebral artery here in the superior cerebellar artery. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of trigeminal neuralgia. So by far the most important symptom is going to be facial pain. So the facial pain in trigeminal neuralgia has particular characteristics. It has a sudden onset, so it occurs suddenly. The pain is described as intense and excruciating. So it's very, very painful. It's most often unilateral. So most cases are going to only affect one side of the face. And then some patients can describe aching and burning prior to that very severe attack or very severe pains. So they can have some aching and burning sensation in the area. And the pain itself is described as shooting, jabbing, or electric pain. So it's a nerve pain. And then there are recurrent episodes of this pain. And what is noted is that frequency of these episodes of attacks increases over time. And the duration of pain of each of these attacks is variable. It can be seconds, it can be minutes. In some severe cases, it can occur for hours to days. So this can be very, very debilitating on patients. And what often happens in trigeminal neuralgia is that the mandibular zone is going to be affected the most often. So the area where the mandibular branch 
from the trigeminal nerve, that is the area that's going to be affected the most, followed by the maxillary zone and the ophthalmic zone. And then certain triggers can cause the sudden, very painful attacks. And these triggers include movement of the muscles in the face. So generally speaking, moving muscles of the face can trigger these attacks. So anything from eating, talking, or even touching the face can cause this type of facial pain to occur. And then in some cases, there may be some facial spasms. So the muscles in the face may twitch and spasm as well. So how do clinicians diagnose and treat trigeminal neuralgia? Clinicians often diagnose this condition clinically. So by history and physical examination, oftentimes it's going to be diagnosed. So a lot of those characteristic findings we talked about in the last slide with regards to symptoms, that's going to be oftentimes enough to make the diagnosis. And then if there is any suspicion of perhaps a tumor that could be compressing the trigeminal nerve, MRI imaging can be used as well, and this can help to rule out secondary causes or lesions. So the treatment of this condition oftentimes requires certain therapies. So the first-line therapies for trigeminal neuralgia oftentimes are going to be carbamazepine. So clinicians are often going to use carbamazepine as a treatment for this condition. And then oxcarbazepine can also be another treatment as well. So these are the two first-line therapies. And then some second-line therapies, if those don't work, baclofen can be used. Lamotrigine may also be used as well. And then in certain severe cases, surgical options may be employed as well. So if you want to learn more about other neurology conditions, please check out my neurology playlist. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.